Hi everybody, my name is Tim Ravel. For those that uh, don't know me, um, I'm a biology professor at Mount San Antonio College and today I'm gonna walk you through some of the beginning parts and some of the terminology for our genetics lab. So we're gonna start by talking about these cute little bunny rabbits here. And I need you to recall from previous lectures that in the animal, uh, the animal's made out of cells and those cells have inside them a nucleus. And in that nucleus is our different chromosomes and the chromosomes are made up of DNA. And then we use that DNA to be a code for coding for messenger RNA, which then ends up coding for proteins. So what we need to kind of keep in mind is that these rabbits are say different colors, black and brown, ultimately because they have certain chromosome DNA traits that result in proteins that make them become brown or black in this case. Okay, so I need to have a quick disclaimer here. We're gonna over, oversimplify this and in doing so, it's not quite 100% accurate, but this is how we gotta have, this is how we have to start uh, when we um, are, are learning our genetics for the first time. So we're going to imagine that there is a gene for fur color and that that gene can make the rabbits come out in different ways, black or brown. Now in reality, um, most traits like the brown fur of a rabbit or skin color in a person are not affected by one gene, but rather a whole bunch of genes. So we're oversimplifying this to learn it. Now, in this case, the rabbit for each gene, like let's say fur color, um, the rabbit is um, made up of diploid cells primarily, meaning it has two sets of chromosomes because it got one set of chromosomes from its mom and one set of chromosomes from its dad. And so it's a two in, it's a diploid um, organism, okay? When the rabbits reproduce, they're gonna make sperm or eggs, and those are generally haploid, one set of chromosomes. And the two one sets are gonna get together to make a diploid cell. Now, in this case, um, as I said, the gene for fur color, um, again, we're oversimplifying this, it can come in two different forms. So that DNA sequence could be like this one here, or it could be like this one here. So those we call different alleles. Different alleles are different forms of a gene that have a different code. And often when we describe them, we use a letter such as a capital B or a lowercase b to define what that is. So this big B, here is meant to represent a particular code, and this little b is meant to represent that same gene, but a different code. And we use the b usually referring to the dominant trait. So in this particular case, um, I'm going to imagine that the black color is the dominant trait, and so a rabbit that lacks the dominant trait is gonna be brown. Um, so we'll get to that in a minute. So we have our big B again, which represents that sequence, um, and this little B, which represents that sequence. So when we talk about the color of the rabbit, whether it's brown or black, that's called a phenotype. So phenotypes are the physical outward appearance that you get from certain genes. The genes that the rabbit has make up what's called the genotype. So the genotype are things like big B, big B, remember it's two in, right? It's diploid, so it has two of each one, one from mom and one from dad. So if it got this one from mom and this one from dad, it's diploid. And then, or it could be like this one. It could have a big B and it could have a little B, like you see there, okay? Now what we need to do is figure out um, what could happen. And this, the way we do this is using what's called a Punnett square. Okay, the Punnett square shows us the different possibilities of what could happen if you combined, say, two different animals with certain genotypes. Now, again, in this case, I'm sort of making this up and I'm pretending that the big B, big B rabbit 
here is black and the little b little b rabbit is brown and again i'm oversimplifying this because in reality there's multiple um, genes usually that code for different things like it's usually not this simple but as we learn it this is a good way to start so what i do is um, this rabbit, when it goes through meiosis to make sperm or eggs, I've got to figure out what kind of combinations of gametes it can make, what kind of sperm or what kind of egg. So one option is when it goes through, remember it's only going to put one of each kind in. So it could put in a sperm or egg, a big B, or it could put a big B doesn't really have any other options because it has one of each of those. So if I do it with a brown rabbit over here, if it's genotype is little B, little B, when it goes through meiosis to make sperm or egg, depending on which rabbit it is in the story, it can make a little B or it can make a little B. So then the idea is, let's just say this is uh, the sperm and let's just say this one's the egg. It really doesn't matter where you put them as long as you have all the combinations somewhere. So the idea with the Punnett square is it shows you the potential outcomes of things happening. So if the big B and the little B, if the sperm fertilize this egg, you would get that genotype. If the sperm fertilize that egg, you would get that one and you do it for each one and you see that all of them come out the same uh, where it's big B little B when your when your genotypes are the same like you see here you have both um, letters that are either dominant or recessive we call that homozygous if they're different like you see here we call that heterozygous Okay, so that should be a good little introduction to seeing how you set up a Punnett square and how you link the idea of a certain gene relating to color. So we'll move on a minute here and uh, do some other examples with you.